Folks, there's a writer's strike going on, uh, as we all know, and because there's a writer's strike going on, Bill Maher is on a sort of indefinite hiatus from his HBO show, Real Time, and instead is doing his podcast in his basement, Club Random, with Bill Maher. He had Jim Gaffigan on the show to, I guess, talk, amongst other topics, about the writer's strike. Here's Bill Maher's take uh, on... <laughs> professional unionized writers in Hollywood. I feel for my writers, I love my writers, I'm one of my writers, yeah. uh, but there's a big other side to it and a lot of people are being hurt besides them. A lot of people who don't make as much money as them in this um, bipartisan world we have where you're just in one camp or the other, there's no in between, you're either I think you meant binary world, not bipartisan. I think that was a misspeak, um, but anyway. Or the other, yeah. there's no in between, you're either for the strike, like like they're fucking Che Guevara out there. You know, like this is Cesar Chavez lettuce picking strike, or you're with Trump. <laughs> you know, like there's no different. There's, there's only two camps, and it's much more complicated than that. It is, but I, I do feel like there is uh, a lot of the points, a lot of the grievances I, I kind of agree with. I do understand that they're getting uh, screwed a bit by the streamers, yes. Yeah, I mean, but it's a change, and you either, you know, it's like anything that is, you know, I believe in free market, but I also believe in trust and then verify, right? What does that mean? Meaning, you, you know, you don't trust, you know, like the reason, I mean, Zaslov made $400 million, uh, and I think the they're... They're looking for eighty million, for you know. It's like it's like they're gonna gr you know. You leave a kid in front of a bowl of marshmallows, they're gonna eat the marshmallow. It, it's a little. It might be a little unclear to some people what he's talking about there with the trust and verify. What they mean right. is that the streamer, the the a lot of the studios um, do not reveal streaming figures, right? to the public right. or to their staff. And so that becomes a question of residuals, right? If you get residuals based on how well the show does, if that information is never made available to the people who stand to get residuals based on the performance of the show, they could be getting royally screwed. So that's what he's talking just, about. Just, just to interject something, um, you know, Disney is being sued by shareholders now on the grounds that they lied about their numbers. Because you can, right. right? I mean, it's not, it's, it, they, they can tell you whatever they want. You know, so it, what, once streaming, and this, I, I believe this really, Netflix started this precedent of you don't have to be transparent about your numbers. It was inevitable that these companies that would fucking kill their grandmothers for a nickel would start lying about it once you made it uh, the convention that you don't have to report your numbers. Of course, they were going to start lying about their numbers. Right, right, absolutely. All right, now here it gets a little worse here, much worse, I'd say. <laughs> it's not like some grand thing. It's well, I don't know what you're saying. They're only asking for eighty million dollars. Well, I'm saying they're asking for a lot of things. They're asking are, for a lot that of are things, like kooky, like what what I find objectionable uh, about the philosophy of the strike. It seems to be they have really morphed a long way from two thousand seven strike where they kind of believe that you're owed a, a, a living as a writer, and you're not. This, this is show business, this is a make or miss league, and not everybody... You don't think that, like, they should, that streamers should reveal numbers so that they can Oh, maybe, things? sure. Okay. They have this philosophy that you're owed a living as a writer when you're not. Well, I don't know which writers he's talking about because i think most people would agree that your 23 year old cousin who just graduated ucla film school who has a screenplay that he thinks is dynamite and isn't it unfair that nobody else likes it yeah you could say that person is not owed a living as a writer but that's not who's on strike you fucking asshole the people who are on strike <laughs> <laughs> are union writers they are professional writers it's right. the writers guild of america who's on strike so the people who are on strike are people who according to the standards set by the industry 
are professional quality writers who are employed, many of them at very successful shows, who are not paid enough as it is. They are not guaranteed any sort of benefits or retirement. That's kind of the nature of show business. But they're also being fucked doubly, triply now, or perhaps infinitely, on the residuals front because they're not being told exactly how much they're owed and there's no way for them to know that uh, because there is no independent verification of that. But just the idea, well, you're not owed a living as a writer. We're the people in question are Writers Guild members. They're union writers. And I know streaming is a new thing. AI is a new thing. But a part of this also has to do with more macroeconomic factors. That's why you saw the UPS workers threaten a strike. That's why the UAW workers are threatening a strike now, um, which is that workers from any stripe are starting to see just how much the people at the top have and how little little of that gets trickled down to them. Um, you have a lot of comics, a lot of just mid-range stand-up comics who just make a very modest living as stand-up comics. A lot of them uh, have written from time to time for these late-night shows that are very successful. Mm -hmm. They don't pay that much. They don't pay. Right. They, they don't pay enough where the people can make a living just on those gigs. That's why they're out working the clubs every night to supplement and things like that. Right. And so the industry just never paid very well. It was always a highly unequal industry. Bill Maher has been in the industry for decades. He certainly knows that. He is not one of these guys, to his credit, who was sort of, uh, you know, uh, I shouldn't say grandfathered in. That's not the right term. But he's not a Nepo baby. Right. I mean, he, mm -hmm. he started slumming it in the clubs in New York and he worked his way up. And God bless um, and maybe his writers get paid well, which is why he's saying, well, you know, I love my writers, but the writers are making it worse for people who make less than them. I don't know what he pays his people uh, who, who write for him. But the idea that, uh, oh, all, all writers think that they're owed a living, that, that's just not what we're talking about here. Right. All right. So uh, I, I have a few things to say about this. One uh, Bill Maher is really on a roll with his Louis the Fourteenth takes the last couple of weeks. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the, the, from from making Marianne doing all, the almost impossible and making Marianne Williamson look like the in touch one. Right. right um, exactly, yeah. <laughs> with it with his Skid Row, I don't go there. No, take go there. Uh, uh, Americans are doing great. Oh, the ones that aren't doing great. Well, I don't go there. Right. That incre I incredible. <laughs> I don't, I don't would see I look them. at them. <laughs> I would. I look at them. I'm, we're not talking about the people doing badly. We're talking about everyone else. Right. Um, <laughs> so that was amazing. Um, and then this one. Um, how dare these writers expect to be paid? an amount for their work that allows them to eat. Right. In my day, we were paid in coal. Right. <laughs> you know, like, what the fuck are you talking about, Bill? Especially, as you say, having been in this business for decades. Um, I, 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 I've, I've touched on this when, we, when we've talked about this subject. you got a few things going on here, Bill Mars, take aside. I, I have mentioned this before. I have never seen... I have never seen people as unsympathetic to a strike as they are to the general. People have just kind of lumped it together in their mind as one big Hollywood yeah, strike. Showbiz the strike. Actors, the writers. Okay. Part of this is what has happened with writers in Hollywood, I think, is kind of what's happened with journalism. Taibi always talks about how journalism used to be like average people, right? It wasn't, they didn't come out of the Ivy League. That's not who did journalism. It was almost a working class job. You know, you look at the backgrounds of some of these legends of Hollywood, like John Houston was like fucking, a, you know, a pearl diver and a roustabout and he had done all of these crazy odd jobs before he landed in Hollywood and wound up a director. When you look at the backgrounds of these writers now, it's not a surprise that the product coming out of Hollywood is completely out of touch with public taste and public interests and public sensibilities. That is a big part of why a, a lot of the public is like, they're on strike, fuck them, who cares, right? Good, maybe, maybe we could get some good writers now, right? So 
I'm not saying this is true of everybody in the industry, and uh, but a lot of these writers have spent uh, the last uh, 10 years or so telling the American public what fucking uh, Neanderthal jackasses they are. Um, so you shouldn't be surprised that nobody cares. Also, on a, on a union level, um, where have you guys been? You know, because I'm seeing a lot of people, I, I still have a lot of contacts with people in that industry. And I'm seeing them all talk about labor like, uh, oh, oh, you heard of labor and the issues involving labor? Welcome. Welcome to the club. Welcome. Because I've never heard you motherfuckers say a goddamn word about auto workers. I've never heard you say a word about the communications workers. I've never heard you say a word about the nurses union. Literally, I've never seen any of these fucking people say a word about labor issues until now. All of a sudden, they want to say shit about labor. And I think the they're not even doing it now. Look what's going on with the auto workers. Have you, no, they, have look, you this is all true. I just have to interject a very, very quick thing because we're... we're, we're because because I think that while we can say like, OK, yeah, I mean, in Enrique Tarrio's case, we don't share his politics, obviously, um, but we don't think he should be serving 22 years or we think that the Trump. Yeah, I'll get there. I, yeah, I'll get, right. I'll get there. I'll get there. We got to like, you know, like, yeah, I, I, I personally would probably find these people uh, very, very difficult to talk to for more than 10 minutes without wanting to throw up. That doesn't mean I don't want them paid. Like, you know, uh, yeah, yeah, you know I'll I mean? get there. yeah, let me finish. I'll get there. Um, <laughs> I, I wasn't going to say, well, they shouldn't be paid. I'll get there. But OK, I went to the railway because somebody said to me, because I brought this up to somebody who's in the industry and they said, well, do other unions show up to support unions that don't involve their profession? That's how ignorant these people are. About labor. <laughs> That's what they said. Like, but nobody does that. I was like, no, yes, they fucking do. Yes, they do. When I went to the demonstration for the railroad workers, the pilots union was there. Teachers union, completely unrelated union. They even have a right. word for it. It's called what solidarity. They? they even have a term oh, for it. They didn't even fucking know that was a thing. And I think this is particularly egregious to a lot of people who are conscious of the labor movement because it's they have a unique platform. Not all of them, not most of these writers, not even most of these actors, but there are their most prominent members are among the most prominent members of society. So not only do they not show solidarity, they don't use this incredible power they have that no other union would have the power to support labor the way that these actors could, right? But have you ever seen them fucking do it? Not, not now. And back in the day, you used to have some actors used to do things like that. But it's been decades since we've seen that kind of activism come out of Hollywood and that kind of solidarity come out of Hollywood. So... That is why nobody really gives a fuck. That's why you're not seeing anybody from the auto workers saying anything about them. But you're not seeing them say anything about the auto workers, right? And they never have, right. and they course, won't. Yeah. And, and that's part of why when you see these actors talking like all of a sudden they just fucking discovered the Communist Manifesto, you're like, right. yeah, yeah. Who, who the fuck are you kidding? Who are you kidding? All of that having been said, their enemy is worse, right? Because what Gaffigan is saying there is not wrong. You do have these CEOs getting paid tens of millions of dollars, and you do have these companies crying poverty. Um, and they are taking advantage of the precedent that Netflix set of not having to report your numbers to screw writers and actors by not giving them a proper percentage of what these properties are making. So, yeah, it is a classic. It, it's what's happening to labor all across the economy, where you have these companies crying poverty. Meanwhile, their executives are getting paid tens of millions of dollars. It's, a question, it's not that these companies aren't making money. It's a question of how you distribute that money. Now, my final point, all of that having been said, is, you know, Fran Drescher 
when she gave she this moment was was uh, everywhere where she said uh you know we're on the titanic and it's hitting the iceberg you know it's interesting that she didn't take that to its logical conclusion this whole thing strikes me just on a macro level as uh you know P yeah i mean it's 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 rats fighting over the cheese on the sinking ship right like the whole hollywood business model doesn't make any sense anymore uh, content is just not distributed that way anymore. It's not where people's eyeballs are. Uh, people are looking at TikTok. They're looking at YouTube. They're looking at Instagram. Um, and especially as there's a generational shift, in other words, as the old people die, increasingly that whole model doesn't make sense. And also you have the AI element, which is central to this. The writers don't want them using AI. Okay. What about people who aren't Hollywood studios? What about people who are not, aren't parties to this? What about when, I keep saying this, the technology is advancing so rapidly that within 10 years at the latest, maybe within the next five years, a 12 year old is going to be able to make a movie that looks like Pixar on their fucking computer. How, what, what's, what's gonna be the rationale for your industry at that point? Because I promise you, thousands of 12 year olds making that movie are going to produce 10 that are better than anything you've done. In the last <laughs> right. Yeah. Okay. So how are you going to compete with that? So this, this is really fighting for control of a dying industry that is not really going to be able to continue in its, in its uh, traditional form for very much longer. Please clap.